Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank the Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission for inviting me to testify here as a witness today. It's worth remembering that this commission is named after the late Congressman Tom Lantos, a Hungarian-born Holocaust survivor. In July 2003, he said, Indians and Jews share a passionate commitment to respect for others, for the rule of law, and for the mindless, vicious, fanatic Islamic terrorism. I'm also reminded today of American journalist Daniel Pearl, who was kidnapped and beheaded by Pakistani terrorists. His last words, my father is a Jewish, my mother is a Jewish, I am a Jewish. Honorable members of the Tom Lantos Commission, I speak before you the last words of Daniel Pearl in my own words. My father is a Kashmiri Hindu, my mother is a Kashmiri Hindu, I am a Kashmiri Hindu, and our home and lives in Kashmir were destroyed by radical Islamic terrorism. As I begin to speak, I am choked. As I begin to speak, I'm choked by the thoughts of those voices I represent here because their voices were extinguished in the most brutal fashion. I am a member of the minority Hindu community from Kashmir, victim of the worst ethnic cleansing witnessed in independent India. I speak here today because I am a survivor. An innocent young woman, a lab assistant in a school, wasn't as lucky as I was. She was abducted, blindfolded, gang raped and cut into two halves on a mechanical saw while still alive. Her name was Girija Tikku. Her only crime, her faith. I am her voice today. I am also the voice of young Kashmiri Hindu engineer who was hunted by terrorists, again for his faith. When terrorists came to kill him, he hid inside a rice container in his attic and he would have been alive today had his location not been disclosed to the terrorists by his own neighbors. His neighbors he trusted, neighbors that we trusted. The terrorists shot him through the container and forced his wife to eat the blood-soaked rice. His name was BK Ganju. His crime is faith. I speak for him today. I could go on and on. We have seen ISIS level of horror and brutality in Kashmir 30 years before the West was even introduced to the brutalities of radical Islamic terror. I'm glad these hearings are happening today because when my family and I lost our homes, our livelihood, and our way of life, the world remained silent. Where were the advocates of human rights when my rights were taken away? Where were they on the ninth, night of 19th January 1990 when there were voices blaring from all mosques in Kashmir that they wanted Kashmir with Hindu women but without Hindu men? Where were the saviors of humanity when my feeble old grandfather stood with two kitchen knives and an old rusted axe ready to kill my mother and I in order to save us from the much worse fate that awaited us if we landed in the hands of terrorists on the same fateful night. My people were given three choices, flee, convert, or die. Around 400,000 Kashmiri Hindus fled right after that night of horror. They survived. Those who didn't were killed. Today, 30 years later, I'm still not welcome in my home in Kashmir. I am not allowed to follow my faith without fear. My house in Kashmir is illegally occupied as those are of other countless others in my community. Those that are not occupied have mostly been burned down or are ransacked. Thousands of our temples have been vandalized, desecrated, and lay in ruins. Every effort has been made to eradicate Hinduism from Kashmir. Today, Kashmir is home to only one religion, this is by design and is the ultimate violation of human rights. Diversity and acceptance of different views are not the norm in today's Kashmir. It's not just Hindus that have been ethnically cleansed. cleansed. Six have been massacred. A fatwa was announced against Christian schools in Kashmir, accusing them of luring Muslims to Christianity. What human rights are we talking about when all minorities have either been driven out or silenced? An Islamist state of Kashmir where other religions are not welcome and tolerance of any other viewpoint is absent is no citadel of human rights. This is the society that is being created by Kashmir by those who are talking about human rights. Terrorism, ladies and gentlemen, is the ultimate opponent of human rights. Human rights cannot and should not take precedence over human life. 
everyone who stands for freedom, liberty, and right to life should worry about radicalization that fuels terror. A 65-year-old shopkeeper, Ghulam Mohammed Mir, gets killed by the terrorists because he opened his shop to earn his livelihood. Truck drivers and apple traders are shot dead by terrorists for simply wanting to earn their livelihood. The simple act of earning livelihood in Kashmir today is prohibited by terrorists because earning a livelihood would show that Kashmir is moving towards normalcy. I ask you, who are these people who fear normalcy in Kashmir? Who are these people who talk about human rights but fear free movement, free thought, and the right to earn livelihood? Abrogation of Article 370 that has raised so much concern around the world is in fact a restoration of human rights. Indian Constitution, which is modeled on the U.S. Constitution, Indian Constitution, excuse me, everybody. Indian Constitution, which is modeled on the. I want to say, just I mean, we want to, we want to give everybody the respect of listening to them. So I would urge that nobody interrupt. Thank you so Thank much, you. All right. Chairman. I was saying that Indian Constitution, which is modeled on the U.S. Constitution, is the most liberal document in the world. The Constitution was not applicable to JNK in totality as long as Article 370 was in force. After abrogation of Article 370, people of Jammu and Ladakh have been liberated from the tyranny of being half citizens in their own country. Child marriage, which was responsible for child trafficking and sex trafficking, has been made illegal in Kashmir. Kashmiri women and LGBTQ community in Kashmir has been given the same rights as other Indian citizens. As a mother, it's very important to me now that child marriage has been outlawed in Kashmir. Today, I'm delighted that Kashmiris have the same rights as Indian citizens. If something as serious as women's right to own property and granting of LGBTQ rights to choose, amongst many others, has been accomplished through abrogation of Article 370, then it's safe to assume that restoration of internet in few remaining districts of Kashmir is not too far away. I am a proud daughter of Kashmir. I am a proud legacy of India's composite civilization. Terrorism has uprooted me and snatched my home from me. I hope my human rights are restored to someday and the human rights of my community. Thank you. Thank you very much.